Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rosie and I'm currently in Lima, Peru. Now today we are going to the historical centre so I thought I would vlog it and bring you along with me. I think there's about 20 or 30 churches, I think there's lots of colonial buildings, so lots of kind of yellows, pinks, greens, that kind of thing, lots of colourful buildings, big squares, lots of churches, lots of, I don't know, I just think lots of lovely old buildings. So I thought I would vlog it and take you along with me. So the first plan of action is to get a taxi. Jeremy has been messaging our taxi company on WhatsApp. Now it's the company that we use from the airport to get into Lima, into Miraflores, which is where we are now. So he's messaging them and asking how much it would be for a taxi from here to the historical centre. Depending on the price, we'll either do that or we'll get an Uber. We have heard mixed reviews about Uber in terms of safety, in terms of apparently just pull up and then say actually it's this much and charge a different amount. So we're trying to find the safest way possible, so we'll see what this taxi company says in terms of price. But otherwise I think it should cost about 15 to 20 soles I guess to get from here to the historical district. Um, and then we're planning on just walking around all day. We've packed some sandwiches with us, so hopefully we won't have to buy any food or anything when we're there. We're going to take water and a banana as well for snacks. Um, so yeah, just be a lovely day walking around the buildings, taking some photographs and just experiencing a different part of Lima. So the taxi company got back to us and said 30 or 35? 38. 38 soles. And we looked on Uber and it's 10, so we're going to try Uber. Uh, we've just ordered one and it cancelled, but when we signed up, it said that it's mandatory for Uber drivers to audio record the conversation. No, like, you can if you want to. Oh, you can? Yeah. If you feel As uncomfortable. Yeah. And then, so that if you feel uncomfortable, then we can send it to Uber and complain with like proof of audio that like somebody's asking us for money or whatever, you know, if anything bad happens. So, we've never seen that before, have we? It says it's mandatory, so that's interesting. So I guess it's just to keep people safe, like tourists safe. So we got this from the tourist information place and he said we'd be dropped off around here which we are so that building there is that building there and there's 23 churches um, and museums and palaces like old buildings I think but he said to walk up this way up to Plaza Mayor which is also uh, Plaza de Armas like the military I guess or something like the main square basically so we're gonna do that but this is where we were dropped off. I didn't feel super safe getting out of the car because, um, I don't know, those men asking if people wanted diplomas, right, you said? Yeah. Certificates. Anyway, let's get going. So this is the first building that we're coming past and it says Palacio de Justica, I think it means. So Palacio... Oh, so this is the... Do you think this is the court? Yeah. This is probably the courthouse then. Yeah. So I just walked up to Plaza San Martin, which is this one here. So it's got some grass in the middle and these big old beautiful buildings. And I love these archways. Let me just show you in here. It looks so pretty. I'm going to have to get my camera out. How nice is that with the floor and the archways? Oh, I love it. Somebody's selling some things. Anyway, I'm going to get my camera out and take some pictures because this is so pretty. So this is such a pretty square behind me. I think it's so lovely. Um, it definitely feels different here to Miraflores, like it feels more local and more real for sure. 
Um, there are a couple of tourists taking pictures here in the square, but otherwise this area seems <laughs> like there's a lot less tourists. Uh, but yeah, it's beautiful to take photographs, lots of lovely old architecture and buildings and things. We're walking up the street and look at this yellow one, oh my god. Uh, this is like Panama and Cuba and France and all rolled into one. Okay, I need to take some photographs of this one. So there's the yellow one and then there's this blue one. But look at this one with the red and the black and white. Isn't that beautiful? And this cute little pink one on this corner. Oh my god, I love it. So we've just walked to this church. Can you see the colours? Oh my god, it is so beautiful. Thanks for that, Jeremy. Jeremy's photographing the sex shop. <laughs> so we were just walking along and look at this bit here. How intricate that is and how random it is next to this awful, like, <laughs> 50s, I don't even know what year that is, 80s movie building. There's this beautiful, intricate work there. I wish I'd filmed my initial reaction to this because I went, look at this building! Whoa! I mean, look at it! Look at, are you looking guys? Look, just look! Oh my goodness, how pretty is that? Okay, yeah, there is a cute puppy over there. <laughs> but this building wins. Look at the balconies, Jeremy. And the text on it. The windows. Oh. buildings, yellow buildings. Yellow is the colour of Lima. So there's lots of colours that are yellow and it's so pretty. Oh my goodness. And this is the main square, Plaza Mayor and Plaza des Armas. I think it's got both names. Holy guacamole, look at the archways. Oh, there's a big band in front of that building. Is that the hill behind? There's a Christmas tree, but is there a big hill behind? Over there. Oh my goodness. Jeremy just said this reminds him of Buckingham Palace and I completely agree. Like with the, the kind of, I'm obviously it's smaller, but the shape with the kind of fencing outside, the iron gates, and there's a band. I mean, there's no palm trees in England, but apart from that, it's pretty similar. <laughs>
the centre of the square, there's this one here which is where the band is playing. I'll put the names of these buildings on screen so you can see as well. And as we go around, there's another yellow building and then there's this one, I guess it's a church. They're going to pop it on screen. And then there's another yellow one there with archways. And in the centre there's this, I don't know if it's a water fountain or just a statue. More yellow buildings, more yellow buildings. There's a Christmas tree, some guy waving. More yellow buildings, more yellow buildings. And back to where the band is playing. So you can still hear behind me, but Jeremy just asked a police officer what was happening. And it's a change of the guards, and apparently it happens every single day. Um, they have this whole parade with like the music and changing guards things. So it was quite fun that we got to watch it and we're here on time to watch it. We didn't come like late in the afternoon. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching some of that footage of them walking. <laughs> Okay, it's now time to have some lunch. We packed some sandwiches, so cheese and ham toasties and a banana to share, so we're going to have that. So something I've noticed here in Lima is that there is loads of police everywhere. There's one here, one here. They're kind of dotted around everywhere, so it actually feels pretty safe. And I know you might think that there must be a reason to have a lot of police, and maybe there is, but actually I feel really safe knowing that they're here. Um, I just thought I'd let you know. Um, we're now walking towards the big pink building that I saw earlier, kind of a churchy pink thing. So I'll show you that and see what it looks like. So we're heading this way. I have no idea where any of these buildings are, but that pink is beautiful. So it's yellow on the bottom and then pink on top. It's so pretty. walking past this blue one. It's very interesting to see a bright blue one in this build in this town. I think it's kind of pinks and yellows and whites. So I'm going to take some photographs of course. So this area really reminds me of Cuba, of Havana, like all the old buildings and different colours and small little shops and restaurants that are like you'd kind of walk past and not really notice. It reminds me so much of Havana. We found ourselves at the square of Colegio Santo Tomas de Aquina, Aquina, which I guess is the college, like a school. And over here, but look at all the colourful buildings on that hill. And then that's a church. And I think this is where the real people from Lima live. Like this seems like it might be the real neighbourhoods, which we're obviously not going to go into. Um, I bet it was super interesting but maybe not super safe and you can see the mountains here I think this is the Andes so it's pretty cool so Jeremy just noticed the half of this building is pink and then the other half over there is white so I wonder why it's like that so it's literally split down the middle pink and white Okay, so we're now back at the main square here and this time we're going to go up this road because it looked quite, I don't know, active. It looked quite colourful earlier so we'll see what's there. I want to see what's on the music around. Yeah, it also sounds like there's some sort of either festival or protest. I'm not quite sure. There's lots of like whistles and bells and noises and banging and stuff. So we'll walk a little way, not get too close sounds obviously. Like like yeah, Jeremy's wondering if it's football fans. Okay. So anyway. We're about to go up this street next, next to Buckingham Palace, as Jeremy called it. So we're walking up this way and there's two more of these women. I didn't show you them earlier, but there was two the other side and there's two more here. So I wonder if they're artists work. Anyway, walking along here to see what all the noise is about. <laughs> Hopefully it's nothing scary. Okay, so we think it's a protest because there's lots of police, even more than before. And they're all staying in one place so I wonder what this building is here. And I also wonder what it is they're protesting, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get much closer because I don't want to get involved. But... I 
If I find out what it is, I'll let you know in the description box down below so you can find out as well. No idea. So we're walking back down to the square and there's two or three restaurants here that are pretty busy so I guess these are like the local areas. This was one of them. It seems quite busy with not tourists. And then there was one here as well. This one, a menu I think is nine solas I guess, that's pretty cheap. Got pineapple juice but yeah it's full of local people so we looked at quickly at the menu and pineapple juice is four solas which is about not even a euro basically for a fresh pineapple juice but the only thing we have is a hundred solas note and we don't want to pay for like a four solas drink with a hundred solas it sounds ridiculous like it feels ridiculous so we might ask somebody one of the street vendors maybe later on um, but now we're going up the road that I said earlier, which is next to the Buckingham Palace of Lima. I don't know what the building's called, but anyway, we're now going up this one instead. Jeremy's looking at the women. Jeremy just realised it's the mountain over there that I was photographing with all the houses on, and then with the cross on the top. I wonder if they created like 10 of these or something and had different artists paint them, because that one's obviously that. This one, I don't know what she's doing. It's like a balcony. Yeah. But there was two other ones over there. I might show you if I get round to if we go and see them again. It's a chocolate museum, Choco Museo. This is my kind of museum. Oh, 100% handmade paletas. Oh, okay. Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look. <laughs> They've got handmade ice creams. Oh my god, chocolate liquor. Everything in here is chocolate. chocolate bars so 20 solas is about um, 20 solas is that four or two four euros so four euros per bar of chocolate that's european price that's european prices yeah well i guess it's all like local local handmade stuff what else is there i can't chocolate alcohol i want to try some chocolate alcohol Hello. Uh, see? Acá tengo que chocolate con leche, chocolate en 70, 85 y chocolate de blanco. Mm. Okay, now trying some dark chocolate. Oh, oh, oh! What's your, what do you think? Mm. Actually, my favorite is this. This is the bar energy. Okay, so this is the bar energy. Okay, so this is the bar energy. The ones here have milk, because you want nuts. Mm. And the ones with food have no milk. Um, is that right? Just purely. Well, it's delicious. We're now looking at all the different chocolates. They've got yeah. cocoa, which I'm not sure if that's cocoa, like yeah, cocoa, cocoa leaves, leaves. Yeah. like cocaine leaves basically. Orange, quinoa. Chili. Oh, chili as well. Coffee, Oreo. Raisins. M&M's, raisins apparently. Look at these chocolate cakes, chocolate mousse. My God. <laughs> Thank you. Like this. So I'm about to try a passion fruit chocolate liqueur. Oh my god, it smells so good. Oh, it's strong. <laughs> it, it is a sweet. Wow. More sweet. <laughs> Holy. Try that. Do you like passion fruit? pieces of chocolate in it. <laughs> <coughs> oh, that's incredible. So we're getting three chocolates. We're getting milk chocolate, um, orange flavoured milk chocolate and then dark chocolate with nuts in it. Is it? Yeah. And then we're just getting a little chocolate ice cream, chocolate and 
um, and ice cream. Yummy. So it's a chocolate ice cream and it's got chocolate stuff in the middle as well. Delicious. Highly recommend this place here. So we finished the ice cream. It was delicious. We're now walking up the street that I told you about about three times. So in front of us it says House of Peruvian Literature, which is this big beautiful white building. I've no idea what's going to be around here but I just love exploring new places. Just look at this street, isn't that so beautiful? So I've just made it to this bit, again I'll put the name on screen so I'm not sure what this place is called, but it's beautiful. How gorgeous is that? So we're now about to walk through Parque de la Murala, which I think is the park that has the old city walls. And at the back there you can see the neighbourhood with all the painted buildings, so for sure I'm going to get my big lens on again, get some more photographs. It's just so colourful. So this is the old city wall. There's a restaurant there. And then over there you can see all the colourful buildings. It's like a pattern on them as well, like di uh, triangle, um, diamonds or something. Okay, let me get my lens and I'll show you some pictures. past the congress building so I thought I'd show you quickly this is what it looks like in Lima, Peru so we decided we're going to walk to Plaza Ita Italia and we're walking past this blue church so I thought I would show you and this seems like the real Lima this seems like really really local definitely feel like I stick out like a sore thumb but I feel okay just <laughs> right we're gonna keep going okay so we've made it to Plaza Italia this area definitely feels more local definitely feels like there's less tourists but there's still some beautiful buildings these green and red random color choice this pink and then I just saw over there in a second I'll show you um, a red church like a huge red dome and things so I'll show you that when we get there but I just love this architecture so pretty and then this is the red church I was telling you about with the big red dome isn't that just beautiful Okay, I'm going to take a couple of photographs and I think we're going to have to get a taxi home. Oh my goodness, they love Christmas here. There's so many Christmas shops. Absolutely decked out with everything you could ever want. This is not the only one, this is just the only one that I popped into, but there's so many. Plaza Italia was kind of crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, cool. Very, very local. Um, there was lots of different markets and people carrying things on their heads and just, it was just kind of crazy, wasn't it? Loads and loads of people, like so many more people than there are in the centre, like in the historic centre, like the touristy bit. Really busy, but full of life. Quite enjoyed it, also felt a little bit scared. <laughs> and I think that's just me being, I don't know, probably shouldn't say that, but anyway. We're back in the historical centre now, walking back to the bit where we got out of the taxi so that we can get another Uber home. So it looks like there's two main banks here. There's that one and then this one, both in these beautiful old buildings. There's another Christmas shop, there's so many of them. Look at this gold door! back at Plaza San Martin, um, walking back down to where we got the taxi from which I just thought I would show you again this area because it is very beautiful. 
so we're back at where we got dropped off this morning by the taxi he dropped us off over there I believe so we can have the opposite side so that we're in the right direction for when the taxi picks us up but we're back here and I'll talk to you when we get home okay so we are home and I just wanted to close off the vlog by talking about our day did you enjoy it? yeah it's nice part of town really nice part of town I think it made me realise how big Lima is because the taxi from where we're staying in Miraflores to there was 20 minutes and it there wasn't like you know it's not like we were stuck in traffic for 10 minutes and that's why it took so long like it was pretty quick going you know there was the flow of traffic was pretty quick it's just that far away um the old part of town loved it the buildings loved it it reminded me a lot of Europe like Paris and um Brussels and different places like that you know the architecture especially like the pink ones with all like the balconies and swirly stuff it was beautiful um really enjoyed the changing of the guards really enjoyed the chocolate shop really enjoyed the passion fruit liqueur i think i'm gonna have to message her and be like hey guys do you want to send me some <laughs> it was incredible incredible um yeah favorite things are the passion fruit liqueur for sure i said to jeremy probably the best drink i've ever had in my life like including all the mojitos and yeah it was just incredible um and also the pink building that i was like Whoa! about if you remember what you if you watched the whole thing, you know what I'm talking about. What was your favourite bit? Anything in particular stood out? Just, no, just everything. Just nice. Something different from here. Yeah, completely different to here. Mm -hmm. And I was saying to Jeremy in the taxi, I think it's somewhere that if I was to recommend coming to Lima, I would probably recommend a couple of days in Barranco, a couple of days in Miraflores, and a couple of days in the old centre. Because the taxi was only like two or three euros each way, wasn't it? So it was cheap enough to get there, which is fine. Um, but I do think I could definitely spend another day or two walking around and like even if I'm looking at the same buildings again they are beautiful buildings but I also think looking around some of the streets we didn't go to um, I really enjoyed it and I felt safe apart from that <laughs> one area around um, Plaza Italia and I think it's just because there was so many people like there was still police there there was less police but there was still police it was just so busy wasn't it yeah no, you, Jeremy felt fine. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's just, I had my bag, my backpack, so you know, you have to be careful when you have a bag behind you. Yeah, so Jeremy was walking in front of me a lot of the time, so I could see his bag. But, um, no, I think it was fine. It was fine. No, obviously nothing happened, and it was absolutely fine. It, you know, nothing happened, but I didn't vlog when we were there. I think I vlogged, like, the red church a little bit, took my camera out, took two photographs, and that was probably it. But then once we turned and walked, as we were walking back that road in particular, there was loads of Christmas shops either side and like New Year's shops. The roads were just full of people. There was no cars on the roads. There was people walking with like huge things on their heads. I think you got a video, didn't you? Yeah, that was cool. Um, it was just like manic, like so, so busy. And like, not in a bad way. It was just a lot of people. And I was like, oh my God, I'm starting to realize now how big the city is. And also how much, like I, I, I just like I said I stand out like a sore thumb like I'm wearing bright orange trousers for a start legging clothes like leggings like yoga clothes which no one else is particularly wearing I'm white <laughs> with lighter hair so I feel like I just and obviously I'm like taking pictures and vlogging everything as well so um, I didn't vlog there because I didn't feel particularly safe but saying that nothing happened to make me feel unsafe so I think it's just you know new city new people new everything new area of town as well um, it definitely felt more local than the other parts of town. Food was way cheaper. Food was way cheaper over there. At least yeah. half price. Like, yeah, right. so we went for a meal like on one of the first days, it's in one of my previous vlogs, and we got a pineapple juice for nine solas. Yeah, nine or ten. ten. And over then it was four, so it was less than half price. The sandwiches here are at least 12, if not 20, yeah. 12 to 20. Here everything is about 20, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, right. When over there it was more like 10, 12, 12, right? yeah. so like that. Like yeah. ceviche was 10 in some places, so yeah, way cheaper. Yeah. Way more local as well, I feel like tiny bistro, yeah, a vibe, like nothing hall. sexy, nothing Instagrammable, like no. stuff like that. More like little, the little thing that. Yeah. There was a couple of tourist shops. There was one road in particular um, where there was kind of tourist shops selling all the like, you know, alpacas and like clothing and stuff. Um, but apart from that, yeah, I really enjoyed it. 
Yeah, cool. Highly recommend it. Um, if you're coming to Lima, definitely worth an, like a day. So we got there at half ten in the morning and left at about four. So we spent about five and a half hours there. Definitely could have spent longer, but we were both a bit tired and our feet are hurting and things. So I ended up coming home. But I would definitely go back another day. If there's any day where we don't have anything to do, yeah. I'd go back and have a, another walk round. Yeah. Or if we ever, you know, recommend somebody else who's coming here, I would say to maybe stay a couple of days there, a couple of days here, and a couple of days in Barranca. I think that would be quite nice. You know, if you're staying like a week. Anyway, closing the vlog off here. This is going to be a long one because I filmed so much because I bloody loved it. So I'm sorry it's so long. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe as well so you can continue following us on our journey. Um, we'll be going to Oxapampa soon and then we don't, well, we sort of got it planned, but we're spending nine months in South America. So make sure you subscribe and follow us along and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye.